Hey, what's up? This is Dan the Mansion at the Roof Gallery, and you are here with... Max Rosenblum, founder and CEO of Supplement Experts. And Vince Lefton with Your Virtual Adjuster. And we are here with The Scoop. Uh, we just had an event today. Um, Max was speaking about supplements, um, just all the various ways that you can increase the value of your claims. Um, and Vince is here, so he doesn't get fined. Uh, <laughs> he's here for the skills, it's okay. Um, but I want to start off with Max. Max, how do you think the event went today? went great. Um, I think, like... As a speaker, when you come to these events, you you just want the crowd to be engaged, right? Um, the people that you're speaking to. And I, and I really felt like I had the room. Everyone was paying attention. We had a lot of really good, like, specific questions at the end. So, you know, I mean, like, when you finish these presentations, like, sure, you like, you know, it's great when no one has questions. But, like, the the quality of the questions, like, when they're there and they're, like, specific and they make you even think, like, it's great. That means that you've done more than a sufficient job. So... Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. Happy how today went. How do you think it went? I think it went good um, for the little time that I was in yeah, you the were, actual meeting. When I say people were paying attention, I'm pretty much eating everybody but Danny. But I was running around with my head cut off um, per usual. But um, now my head's on, and that's why we're here today. Um, and then um, we had a Jeopardy game. Jeopardy game was real fun. Yeah, Jeopardy game was good. Um, you know, I think... Uh, I think we may have, uh, I mean, I think we could be honest with everyone now and tell them that we just totally threw it together with Chad GPT. Chad GPT. And, um, Couldn't tell. And, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I think the uh, difficulty of the questions we didn't really like, we kind of just copied and pasted them. And we, That's yeah. very, very yeah, true. So there was a lot of thought put into it. No, but when, they, when we were asking questions and, uh, you know, <laughs> we didn't know the answers to the questions. No, nah, it, it was the verbiage, <laughs> and, and Vince can s speak on that because anytime yeah. I I do a question, I would look up to him and I see him, but I thought it was because he was confused. He just couldn't see. <laughs> the verbiage was uh, definitely uh, definitely a little bit uh, skewed. Uh, let's I'll put it that way. Yeah, but your team still went away with the yeah with the W. Yeah, so that's all that matters. That's, that's all that matters. What was the team name? Uh, Absolute Roofing. Absolutely. Now, how did we get that name? Oh, because we had to choose uh, alcoholic drinks and a a roofing name. The other Genius. Team, the I other, wonder who the thought other, of those. The other game, the other team, to give it to them, they won the team name, but they lost the game game. That's true. They won the game. We won the war. They were lemon drip edge. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. And they got the the question wrong, that the answer was drip edge, which yeah. was kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so Max. Um, when you go to all these events and you're speaking, what's like one thing that you try to take away from, I guess, each event um, when it comes to the contractors that are coming, the questions that are answered? What, what do you take back to your company and say, hey, this is what we should do or these are the things that we need to change? Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of uh, feedback, right, that you're looking for, whether it's, like, your clients that are there to hear you speak or just, you know, are there to support you and them asking specific questions about, like, their experience or, you know, giving feedback. Um, you know, different, market pres different markets present different challenges. What might be something in Atlanta is not the same in Denver, and it certainly is not the same in Miami, right, right. or Dallas. So we had that hail over here. I mean, you could wish you have that hail, but trust me, you should be glad you're not you working those hurricanes. Policies. <laughs> yeah, and those in the timelines of which – Florida works on yeah. so yeah. I, you know I, I, I think for me it's personally it's just interesting the feedback you get in these different markets um, you know uh, yeah it, that, I think that that's but um, yeah I, I'm like kind of just like you know thinking about something like that's like I've been like something I've been thinking about all day mm -hmm. and kind of just want to like present to the two of you. So this morning we went out to one of their builds and uh, we were just shooting some com uh, you know, content for commercials. And um, this, uh, you know, older gentleman walked out of his house um, like at the end of the cul-de-sac, we like a couple houses down from him. And he like slowly like approached us to talk to us about his claim. And he has it with, with you guys, guys relatively fr you know relatively fresh client whatever um and he came to us and he said um you know hey like you know here's my problem his problem was he filed a claim with his insurance company he's uh he said he never really filed a homeowner claim before at least nothing like this substantial because you know he was it was filing a you know for loss of hail 
and he had damage to his roof and his carrier denied him coverage. They said that there was damage. They didn't write up anything on an estimate. They said in like the letter actually like, Hey, there is some soft metal damage to the, uh, the rain cap and I think some downspouts and something, but they didn't, they didn't write up for any of it to get replaced, which I thought was interesting. Um, and he, uh, you know, he kind of just was asking me questions and, you know, I have access to your CRM. And so I just, out of curiosity, I went in and I looked at it and, you know, I, I, I looked at the damage and the damage was legitimate. It absolutely was like there, there was hail damage to the shingles. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting that they just flat out denied everything. They said it was blistering. Obviously it wasn't. And he was, uh, he was, I mean, he was upset a bit, right? Like, you know, obviously frustrated with his carrier, but also just like frustrated with the process. Cause he said, you know, like, listen, like I have something where like my carrier for like, they give me like $500 off my policy, like off my premium a year because we don't file claims, which I thought was interesting. I never really heard about that. Maybe you have. Yeah. yeah. They have uh, certain companies have like these programs. Like right. Deductible buyback program. Is right. Like Some uh, credit. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, obviously like he's not going to get that. He filed a claim and, you know, so he's, he's definitely upset that, you know, he lost that. Not only did he lose that, he's not getting his claim paid. So, um, you know, he, he kind of came, you know, directly asked me like what my opinion was and yeah. And my opinion was that we should, you know, we, we should write a proper estimate. We should submit it to the carrier with the photos and, and go from there. Um, and you know, I came back and we talked about it and he said, well, we, you know, we have a lot of these jobs, you know, with supplement experts and, uh, you know, yeah, we, we have a, a, a good more than good enough success rate where we are flipping denials into approvals because the damage is legitimate. However, there are cases where, you know, the, you know, supplementing only gets you so far, meaning like, you know, like we're not a PA, we're not an appraiser, you know, so on and so forth. So that, that kind of leads to me wanting to talk to you both about the importance of having like, different tools on your tool belt where, Hey, like supplement experts can help supplement this job because just the value of having like a supplementer as opposed to a PA is there where it's, you know, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to pay for a public adjuster because their fees for their time versus a supplementer who can come in and efficiently get through this and, you know, honestly just be at a smaller fee. However, then you do have these instances where a supplementer just does not have like really like the power to s right. or, or, or the legality to speak on a claim. So, you know, I just want to talk about maybe just for a little bit, like the importance of knowing when at one point to get, pass a job off to a PA or to a supplementer or to appraiser. Yeah. I think it's a really good question. Uh, I get asked that a lot. I think what the, the kind of the misconception one, it's a state by state thing, right? So every state is very different because in certain States, public adjusters, Policy holders have more leverage than the next, right? Georgia, for example, is a, a pretty tough state when it comes to leverage when arguing with insurance companies because the big boys own the legislative, you know, laws and so on. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. When when a PA likes to get involved is when there's still we have still have abilities and meat on the not so much meat on the bone when it comes to dollar value, but meat on the bone when it comes to leverages and arguments we can make, right? When you've done three, four inspections, re-inspections and so on, and you've beaten the horse till its nth degree and tried to supplement and tried to go to it and then hand it to a public adjuster, then it, at that point, it's a little bit of a too late, sorry kind of situation, right? Where I feel, feel like where roof ring co companies should start to now in today's market and today's insurance claim game, that really that's really what it is in the it's not an exact science. Look at the example. You have a homeowner across the street from each other yeah, with, two, with two very different results, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a game. It's not a science. So that being said, it, it's getting the right people involved at the right time and not when it's too late and it's already too far d gone or too far down the road where it's going to be very difficult for anyone to turn it over, right? If that homeowner, for example, that, that, that older gentleman, if a PA can't turn that over in Georgia because the insurance company, you know, doesn't want to listen to us and doesn't want to do another inspection and won't move forward, well, will there be an attorney that will take it? Well, probably not in Georgia. Why? The attorney, they don't have attorney fee statutes here. They're going to only charge a percentage. And it's just a time allocation econ economic question for that attorney. 
So now that homeowner, unfortunately, being with, you know, whatever company he's with for 10, 20, 15 years doesn't really matter. What matters is the result is he's left holding the bag, right? Mm -hmm. And so getting, getting the right people involved, supplementing at the right time, getting a PA involved at the right time. But I, in my opinion, it really starts before that. It's presenting files correctly, right? And I feel like we're getting to a place in the insurance claim world where it should be seen a lot more like retail. When the person who's writing the check, like, for example, if you're selling a retail job, you're giving all the value to the homeowner of why they should choose you. Here's our shingle, here's dynasty shingle, this, that, and so on, right? Because they're going to be cutting the check. We should be doing the same thing, but pre presenting that value and the reasons why X insurance company should be writing that check. And we're not doing that as an industry. We're throwing it against the wall most of the time, having an untrained uh, per, uh, you know, project manager or salesman go out there, chalk up maybe a little bit, but really not present that file to an insurance company in a correct way where you're giving them reasons to pay them and then really kind of complaining about the result at the end, right? And now... The, the, the insurance companies are putting in ways of making it, if you get to that point, now it's a lot harder to get because they've taken away your leverages you have, right? In Georgia, for example, they, there's it's two-way appraisal, right? So appraisal is both parties have to agree. We don't agree to one side, you agree on the other. Great, that's wonderful. State Farm, for example, is the one who does it the most, is we want to go to appraisal. We don't. We're not going. And now the homeowner's stuck, right? So... Uh, my belief is is that if as an industry start presenting files correctly and however you do that, that's training your product, your, your project managers and your sales piece, salespeople better to present files correctly, giving the value to an insurance company, selling the job to the insurance company more than the homeowner, you'll get better results. And then that will also help you down the line with supplementing, even with adjusting, with if it needs to go to litigation because it's been presented correctly from the get-go. So it sounds like it all always starts with the contractor. Uh, it's obviously, always, it's always your fault, Danny. Yeah, it's always <laughs> my fault. <laughs> so always having the right documentation, but setting the expectations to the customer that hey, this is a route it can take. We can take, right? And it could go this way, and this is what you need to be prepared for, so that in the event it does happen, it's not like blindsiding you. It's not like, well, what's next? And the expectations aren't there. So yeah, but I think more than that. I think it's more than just like the setting expectations. Setting the expectations is definitely you know crucial because it can get down there and it will become more and more prevalent. That of there will be more fights. There's not becoming less and less fights. It's mm -hmm. not a, if we're talking to roofers here. Most if you know the majority of them aren't going to say was it easier ten years ago? Yeah, they're going to say for sure it was way easier. I used to call in the claim. The adjuster showed up an hour later. They paid me three hours later, and so on. Right, and now. You know, obviously that's a, a big exaggeration, but claims will get paid faster, easier, and so on. It's not that way anymore. Yeah, I remember State Farm. I used to call them the Oprah of roofs. You get a roof. You get a roof. Right. You get a roof. But, right. So <laughs> now they're not that. Right. And Definitely. I think I think we really just have to get to a point where we put in time into the front end and not really be kind of I want to use the word but lazy in presenting a real package to an insurance company to pay them. Right. It'll make. Max's life easier when you know, it comes to supplementing yeah, I, as well. I, I like I continuously like say like you know we we don't we don't want to just throw shit at the wall and hope that it sticks. Like we just want to present facts. You know it, it would, and I I I think it's kind of like an unfair expectation for us sometimes where we're like we're just told hey go get this and then we're like well like where's where's the evidence and they're like oh we don't have it submitted anyway, and then we just like yeah like that that that's not okay. Right. And I think, you know, the carriers share mutual frustration with that. Right. So, I mean, like, but like, it, it just sucks. Like, I mean, this guy obviously was pissed, but like, you know, I, I like, I wanted to give him an honest opinion. I look at 200 photos and the shingles are like, they have hail hits on them. They're not blisters. It's like, right. I mean, the, like the, the grains were dented in, like, it's obvious. It's obvious. And, you know, for for me, it's like, you know, how, how do I know to serve it, help this guy? It's send the the uh, the photos in with the proper estimate and then just hope that the carrier does the right thing. And that's like, you know, that's... Hopes and dreams. It, it's, yeah, it's, it really that's is. We have go, to, go to Disney you know? World. So, I mean, like, like I said, like, you, yeah. So, 
when it when it comes to like how can we like you know help this guy and it's just like well we can help him if it goes to litigation most homeowners aren't gonna want to do that like i mean but but in some states it's not even an option i don't know how large that loss is but in georgia it's probably not going to be really an option for him no economically for an attorney it's just not going to be worth it Mm -hmm. so then he's left with i have a policy but i don't really have coverage yeah (laughs) It's like, like the, the the check they check the box for their mortgage company almost. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like what can I do? Maybe write a letter to my insurance commissioner's office and say my my insurance. Some states that will help you and some states that will do nothing. Are you an organ donor? Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean that's what it comes out. Yeah, that's 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 what it is. I mean you look at you look at a state like Louisiana where like they every single commissioner has gone to jail, like <laughs> like for forever. <laughs> I, I mean I, I, I heard of stories in, in I think it was Oklahoma, so, but don't quote me that there was a, a firm that was making complaints, valid complaints to an insur- to the DOI, and the DOI came back and investigated them every single time, and not the insurance company on every single one of the complaints. It was like, what were you doing on this file? I I, I made the complaint about this situation to the. To, here's the facts of what happened. Yeah, but what were you doing? Right. I wasn't doing anything. I just got involved. <laughs> right. Like. It, 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 and so I think that we're in a place now where insurance companies are feel they have all the leverage and they feel that they are emboldened. That's, that's because they do. 100% they do, but they're emboldened about it, right? They always had the leverage. Even when he said all state, you know, they were like Oprah. They had the leverage then too, but they were, now they have the leverage, they're emboldened, they're putting in more in policy, and now they're enforcing it. And they know Unfortunately, within our industry, there's going to be more players in the game that who are not going to jump through their either early early hoops early or at all, and so they create this. Let's call it a picture of how the industry actually operates. Where if we were just to put a little bit more time, and and there are people who are trying to train and so on. I my my opinion on that is is there's tons of training platforms. There's tons of you know, people out there training on how to document a loss, how to present a loss, how to estimate a loss before you get out there. But the matriculation of that information down to the ground level at a project matter level doesn't exist. It just doesn't happen, right? It goes to the owner, it gets to the maybe the project, maybe the head of sales, things like that. But it's just too difficult of a, of a turn and burn of the, the sales reps of you don't even know if they're a good sales rep yet and so on. And we've discussed this, you know, so right. it, it's, 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 that's the issue. And if we can just present files correctly, it would make my life easier as a public adjuster. I know it would make your life easier as a supplementer yeah. because they've already paid for a lot of this. It's fully approved. We're talking about some extra items, right? It, it would make it a lot easier instead of taking full, you know, we paid for 25 shingles and make it a replacement. Here, here in Georgia, when, um, when our sales reps are knocking, they, Tons and tons of times they come back. They have a scope of work. It's been approved, um, but it's 140 damaged shingles on a 25-year shingle. Um, and they come back and they're like, hey, we can get this approved, right? And we have to set the expectations right um, for the customer saying, hey, we're not going to 100% you know, right. over-promise. We'd rather under-promise and over-deliver, but these are the, the next steps to take, and this is the process. And with supplement experts, we're usually able to get that overturned right. because of the right documentation that we have in the rep- repair test video um, or an NTS if it is a discontinued shingle. So a lot of the contractors out here in Georgia, they aren't up on game on that. And I don't know why. There's plenty of, like you said, platforms for training um, and events that they can go to that they can get that information. Yeah, but a lot of them also just don't want to do it. That's facts, too. And, and I, I, and I, I you know, it, it all comes back to delay, deny, defend. Mm-hmm. It does. And that's because it's real. And if it wasn't real, then they wouldn't, like, wouldn't be doing it. No. I, you know, I mean, like, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to sit here and just, like, you know, crap all over carriers because, like, the, it, uh, it does go both ways. You do see contractor fraud. But, I, I, you know, but one thing we don't talk about people, I mean, just people <laughs> as a whole don't talk about enough is insurer fraud. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, like, when I see this guy today, like, you know, that it's fraudulent opinion and you know he this this guy you know he he wants the contractor to you know present present the damages to the carrier and show what it would cost to replace it and the hopes that the carrier makes him whole again and you know i you know as a homeowner myself i 
That's what I expect out of my insurance carrier. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that we're, we're going to be able to take care of this guy. I know that something experts will do the best we can. And, you know, if we have to give it to a PA, yeah. like that, it goes that in the right direction. But we know who to give it to. Exactly. Well, I, 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 I told you, sorry, I messed up your cereal with you. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, it, it, when it comes to helping pe- adjust, uh, adjusters, helping homeowners with claims for, for me overall, just to get to the base of the question, base of the answer really is, is that it's, it's not a matter of if we can help you, it's when we sh- would she be brought in to help you. Right. I, I, I was speaking at a, another event once uh, a couple of week, months ago and the, 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 the guy who was putting on the event said, Hey, you know, there's a couple of PAs here. Could you answer some questions? Yeah, sure. Great. And one of the questions is exactly the same thing. Like when should we get a public adjuster involved? Right. And both oh, there was three PAs. I was one of them. The other two PAs said, you, you know, get us involved when X time or what kind of file do you want? That's what was the question. Sorry. What kind of file do you want? Well, this kind of file, not kind of file. I don't want a file that you've beaten for two months that is, you know, basically a broken horse and you want me to make it into a thoroughbred again. I'm not going to be able to do that, mm-hmm. right? That commercial is a different game because there's leverage, there's value. And when there's value, like huge value, then you can get lawyers involved and get policy arguments involved when it comes to the legal side and put it in a courtroom, put it in a judge's hands. Mm-hmm. But when Mrs. Smith has a $20,000 roof, it's never going to see a courtroom in yeah. State Farm and Allstate and all the big boys, they know they're that. They know that, so they're just going to play the emotional game and just say no, 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 no. And now, now what happens? Mrs. Smith left, left holding the bag. Yeah, that was depressing. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Miss Smith. It's, it's yeah, it's sad. I mean, it is. So. But um, maybe let's talk about something a little bit more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk so. about the um, your v- virtual PA. Your virtual adjuster. Uh, so we're a claims platform. Uh, we we we're a full scale f- claims platform. We're bolt on from you know, w- and we work with a bunch of different vendors. But we we you know we work with supplement experts on our supplements, and uh, we we bolt on to. Co- uh, roofing companies and really do a lot of what I was just saying, present files, meet adjusters, handle that front end from contingency agreement on to really start to maybe change the presentation of files to insurance companies. So this way they're at least going to have a much better leg up when it comes to supplementing later, adjusting it later, but more than anything, presenting that file to an insurance company to be viable, right? And that's what we, we want to do. So YVA is a platform for contractors to use as a, a CRM. Uh, you know, we're not a CRM, but what we are is is ability to monitor and manage your claim process uh, from 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 contingency all the way to you know production. So, and it does look nice. We we've used it a few times. Um, we're still using it, and the platform's nice. The people are nice too. And a new update we just went out today, so it looks even cooler. Hey, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, anything else, guys, you can think of? I mean, you want me just to say some more depressing? No, I'm just kidding. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think it's depressing. I think it's just, I think. It's just reality. It's yeah, reality yeah. today. And I think that's actually the most important thing to, to really take away from, you know, whoever may be watching this is, is really well, probably everybody who watches this because it's Roost by Don and it's Dan the Mansion. So, but more than anything is that I think that, Evolute. If you don't evolve, you die, yeah. right? And I think that you have to face reality that it's not as easy as it used to be ten years ago. I'm yeah. sure it's not as easy as how long you've been doing this supplementing well, for. I've, I've personally been supplementing almost ten years, but um, uh, some experts has been around five plus years. So ten years ago was supplementing a lot easier. Oh yeah, I mean right. So they 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 continue to make it more and more difficult. So if we can, you know obviously change how and think a little bit outside of the box and evolve our processes, our procedures, how we you know, put ourselves in the game, however that may be, if you're doing it internally and presenting files correctly, or if it's using outside companies and third parties to do that for you, it, it, but just stop thinking that if I keep doing the same exact thing, I'm going to get a different result because we all understand what that means. Yep. Insanity. Insanity. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone, everyone's got to step up their game in different areas. Um, you know, we're, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are too. I'm like to speak for other people, but I can make an assumption 
you know, we're, we're constantly trying to evolve and be better and change process in a way that's conducive of better results for our clients. And, you know, it, it, it can be frustrating when our clients don't seem to have a similar attitude, right? You know, I, I can give you the playbook all day, but if you don't execute it, then what's the freaking point, right? So, you know, I mean, we do this seminar today where I talk, where I give everyone, like, you know, honestly, like, millions of dollars worth of advice. Will they use it? Will they use it? And, you know, okay, if you're going to use it, how long are you going to be consistent with it? You know, and when you stop and fall out of that pattern, how do you get yourself back? And that's what I see most of our clients and most contractors, like, that's what happens. And the ones that, you know, are able to be consistent and have the process to stay on top of it, like, those are the ones who are by far are our most successful uh, clients. And those are the ones who are with us longest. So, yeah, no. Totally agree. That'd be us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here, guys. Um, Dan the Mansion with Max and Vince. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming to the event. Thank you for course, speaking. For me. Um, shout out to everyone who came out. We had a good time. Next time, you guys will be uh, involved in the Jeopardy too, so you'll have fun too. <laughs> um, but make sure to come to the Ooh. next event at the Roof Gallery, the Roof Museum. And uh, I'm Dan the Mansion with with the scoop and signing off. So thank you guys. Thanks, bud. That was horrible. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs>